We're continuing to track Hurricane Larry here at the last news center. And I do apologize for the lack of videos. I've just been continuing to study here in my study and I've been getting hours of homework every night, which hasn't been the case in the last two years since I started this channel. So I, I, I have been unable to upload, but this weekend here, I'm going to have a couple of uploads on both 91L and Larry, but today we're focusing on a Hurricane Larry, which is currently a 90 mile, 981 millibar hurricane. And this storm is really going to be a big threat to Bermuda, but also the possibility of the East Coast. And I'll talk about that in today's video. As we've seen, the storm started over here. It's been continuing to move generally northwestward over the last couple of days. Uh, moving generally like this, even straight westward generally northwestward and we haven't yet seen that turn towards the northwest and then north has been expected and therefore the models have continuing to trend further west every update now bringing some of the models into the canada area and possibly closer to the u.s east coast and this is why we're keeping a very close eye on this but it has been, it has appeared that it really hasn't really intensified over the last two days, staying right around 90 miles per hour. And for now, it is just maintaining its category one intensity. We haven't really seen any huge development. We've seen a couple eyewall replacement cycle with the storm. We really haven't seen that rapid intensification into a major hurricane quite yet. As again, you can see it generally moving to the north northwest. And again, we've seen those blowups of convection, especially on the southern side, rotating around, but it hasn't really, it hasn't really strengthened a whole lot. Uh, again, you can see that low level center right around here. I'm just going to pause this to where it's at right now. But again, we've seen some strengthening over the last couple of days. It looked a little bit better in appearance. We now have a strong southern eye wall with an eye clearing up a little bit. But it hasn't really yet to fully close that eye well, organize, and to be able to see that rapid intensification. And if we look over the last 24 hours, again, it hasn't moved that much to the northwest. It's generally, it started around here. It's generally been moving to the north-northwest. And so the models, again, have shifted. Current intensity models have a... I mean... At the moment, it is a little bit underperforming. It was already expected to be a major hurricane. So models are dropping a little bit towards maybe Category 2 status. This is the current last news estimate for the storm. We are expecting it to remain in Category 1 for the next 24 hours before slowly strengthening into a major hurricane and eventually becoming a Category 4 hurricane. Uh, so that is our current track intensity, becoming a Category 4 in about 84 hours from now. And if we uh, put that onto our track, that would be as it's uh, making that turn to the northward. Again, still hasn't made so, uh, hasn't made that turn yet. It's still, right now, it, it hasn't taken that turn. It is still going generally this way here. And so every time it's going to shift those tracks to the west a little bit, which is rather concerning. We are going to be looking at those forecast models, which are really showing us the prediction for the storm. And we're going to be analyzing what could go into play with this forecast cone. And again, the current forecast cone for the storm right now is a generally northwestward track towards the island of Bermuda, maintaining this major hurricane status for at least the next couple of days. Um, so... GFS model, here's our current setup here with our high pressure. This is going to give you a good idea of what's going to be going on for the next couple of days. We have our storm right here in the main development region. High pressure right here, pushing the storm towards the west. And so really not a lot of development here. We have that uh, remnants of Ida up there and then that um, cold front here. And so as we move in the next couple of days, that high pressure starts to die out. And so we really have only this one upstairs, up there. And this is what's causing the storm to start to move northwards. Then we have the development of two high pressures right here. So that's going to push the storm even more to the north. And so that's making it take a turn north. As we move on, those high pressures continue here. Now this is our high pressure area. So that's pushing the storm this way. And that's going to continue as we continue to keep that high pressure right around here. The storm's continuing to move this way. We have a very weak very very weak small high pressure forming right here so it really 
really has nowhere out to go than just straight up north. Here's high pressure still right here. And as we move in the next couple of days, you can see that storm following that same track. High pressure's right here now, still pushing the storm towards the north. And we get it moving very, very close to the United States. So we basically get a path like this on the smaller run. And this has been the trend over the next couple of days. Originally, if we go back to very, very early models at this exact moment in time, you can see the shift that we've seen. Here's the same model run, and then we're shifting it days and days ago. And you can see it being farther, farther, and farther west every run. Look at that. Look how much farther west this was originally. Originally expecting to go like this. Look at where it's heading now. And we can continue to look at previous runs. And that continues to shift farther west on some of them. Uh, look at that. This was even earlier, even farther west. So we've continued to see that westward track. Next couple of days, models are starting to agree on this track. And you can see this by the different model here. As we switch to the current uh, intensity. And you can see that we now have a pretty good agreement. CMC going generally in the same place. Um, so we have that agreement now with the models. Navjam a little bit more to the east with that one, a little bit more to the west originally uh, with the Navjam model. That's also a possibility. It has this thing a little bit more um, to the northwest like it's currently doing and then uh, curving towards the north. And so that would, put, uh, that would really put now the east coast in more danger. Uh, as we look at it right here, it really, it would be going like this on the smaller run. Uh, so that is really something to keep in mind. You can see it really not taking a turn on this model. It just continues to the northwest. And that seems a little bit more likely with the current scenario that's building up. Uh, and so most models right now are looking at this. Icon's a little bit, uh, it's really similar thing. So most models are starting to really agree on this storm's track and path. And so... For now, that's really what we're looking at. Big swells expected for the area. Uh, again, shift west is going to continue to be expected. A strengthening storm, likely not in the next 24 hours, but likely a strengthening system uh, in the next 48 hours or so when it does really start to pick up that strength with the system. Uh, something else we do have to keep in mind, of course, with this storm is going to be uh, the impact on wind shear. And so we we haven't seen really much wind shear over the last couple of days, but that could really change as we move on. If we look at the wind shear map here. You can see that we do have a little bit of wind shear in its path. Obviously, that could limit intensification. Uh, a storm is currently right around here, and so this is where it is. And so as it moves to the northwest, it's going to be encountering some wind shear. And National Hurricane Center does expect intensification, uh, surprisingly. So there's a chance that that wind shear does drop. But right now, it would not be very favorable for a huge intensification to occur in these conditions. So we'll have to see whether the wind shear is going up or down uh, in the next couple of days. And that's really going to tell us and dictate how much strengthening we can see. Of course, the, the stronger the system, the more likely it is to curve to the north earlier. So it is really something to keep in mind as well in that forecast track and you can see that right in the path that when she is starting to go down here so it is likely to go down in front of the storm as well in the next couple of days so that's what we're going to be seeing with this storm not a lot of updates are going to be coming for the next couple of days as it does remain in the open atlantic but when it does get closer to bermuda we will start getting those changes for higher swells and the possibility for another western uh, westward shift with this storm, as you can see on this latest from I is really starting to pop out. So this could be the start of some uh, strong intensification towards major hurricane status.